20 years. Um, both of our fathers were ministers. We grew up, Randy grew up most of his entire life in a minister's home, and my daddy was a lay minister when I was through my elementary upper years and junior high. In my senior year, he took a church full-time and moved me away from all my friends. Well, Randy's daddy did the same thing to him his junior year. <laughs> but nonetheless, we were still kind of like hooked on each other by then. We were high school sweethearts. And two weeks after my graduation, we were married. It'll be 45 years this June. And we thank the Lord for our life together. We have three married children, eight grandchildren, four and four. They kept the score even. They are all in church by the grace of God. And I thank him for that. Um, they're all very active in their church. Um, they hold positions and they work with children's ministries and outreach and upward basketball. And one of them is a teacher in the Christian school where um, four or six of the kids now attend. The other two are homeschool. But we thank God for the opportunity. We own downtown drug up here in Hillsborough for nearly 20 years. And we told God if you'll give us health on the other end of our journey, we would like to be able to spend more time for you. The working years of your life is very task-oriented and raising children, as you know. And church being a very big part of your life, you know, it keeps you busy. But we told God if you'll give us health and strength, that's what we wanted to do. So we've been very busy with the Gideons and um, very thankful for what the Lord means to me tonight. Just because I was carried to church all of my life from the time I was little and brought, drugged to church, as they say. I was <laughs> drug baby, too. Um... I had to come to that point in time where I had to give Jesus my heart and my life. Yes, and I thank him tonight for what he means to me. And at this time, we'll let Randy tell you a little bit about what the Gideons are and what we're doing. Amen. Appreciate the young people tonight participating in God's house. Because the first song that he played is Wonderful Words of Amen. What better introduction could you have than that? And also, this is my father's world they sang about. We hear about a lot of bad things going on in the world, but this is still our father's world. And he created it. He made it. We helped to destroy it. And uh, he is still our present help in time of need. And the, the reports that I hear every day about the bad news going on in this world, I think, what if this book would have been part of their life in any way, shape, or form, how much different it might have been. So I think of the great responsibility we have as people, parents, grandparents, relatives, I know in our household there's a lot of a lot of things going on just this past weekend that I never thought would be uh, that we'd be dealing with. Now, not our immediate family, as she said, but our extended family. That those things that they allow to come into their life without the Lord Jesus Christ being their guide. But we're here tonight because of the, the greatest message ever told. It's endured through time, and it will be your, your guidebook to every facet of your life if you allow it. You can find in God's Word just about every condition, situation in life. Some of them in here, when I read it sometimes, I thought, well, that's almost X-rated, seems to me. But God said, I'm here for the, the most severe cases. And in every situation, he is able. 2,234,451,430. It's a big number. That's the number of scriptures that the Gideons has distributed. And hotels, prisons, hospitals, schools and colleges to the military personnel, medical offices, just about anywhere we can go and place these Bibles, we do that. So that's a big number. It's about 2.5 Bibles every second that we hand from person to person across the globe. But yet, when these numbers sound so fantastic, 4.9 billion people have never heard of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. They've never owned a scripture of their own, much less read one. 
to try to comprehend that number is just me. But if you take people and line them up from this pulpit, three foot apart, starting down the aisle, all the way around the world they would go once, twice, more than 116 times. Are we blessed people in America to have God's word? Yeah. All these people. 120 years ago, two businessmen were traveling. They met up in a hotel in Wisconsin. Because of overcrowded conditions, they had to spend the night in the same room. But it was providential because they found that they were both believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they had a vision of distributing God's word every place that they went. They soon shared that vision. And around 1900, Sam Hill and John Nicholson met with William Nice to establish the Gideons International. The Gideons name comes from this book also. Do you remember where it's at? Judges, chapter 6 and 7. You'll find Gideon in there. And uh, their first Bible project, one of them was in Louisville, Kentucky, or if you're from south of Mason Dixon, it's Louisville, Kentucky. All right? Depending on where you're from. But in Isaiah 55, 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Now, I want you to understand that this is a promise from God himself. You can tell me and promise me an awful lot, but guess what? This verse here says, if I hand this out, if I distribute it, he said he wouldn't let it return unto him void. That means it's going to accomplish that which he pleases it to do. Yes. It's amazing, but it is his word. Gideons are members of the local uh, evangelical or Protestant church. We're recommended by our pastors. We are the largest group of missionaries with 270,000 members. We're in 199 different countries and we've translated the good old book and the hard copy in 107 different languages. With technology today though, if you've seen something like this, how many knows what apps are? You plugged in and scanned and all that. Well, this is a Bible app. Take this, if you want one of these, I'll give them to you after, after church tonight. But if you take this Bible app and you scan it into your phone, you can share the Word of God with 1,144 different people who speak languages different from you and dialects different from you. And we used this at the, uh, at the Highland County Fair just last year. Uh, had a Portuguese lady and her friend come by the table there, offered them one of these, and it was in English. Well, thankfully, we had the backup right there. Amen. So uh, we're, we're glad for technology that's used right. But uh, for Mark 9, 41 says, For whosoever shall give a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. If I just have a glass of water and give to someone, Scripture says I won't lose my reward. But what is this called? It's called the living water. Yes. The living water. And how much more to share the living water. And uh, I did mention the Gideon Greeting Card Program. When you go to think about different people, even kids have so much stuff. And birthdays and gifts... Uh, to remember somebody, maybe at a funeral or whatever it may be. We do have all occasion greeting cards. You take these and uh, send the card, get it ready, send it to that special someone. We even have dear pastor appreciation cards if you missed it. You can send those in any other month but October. I think that's what it is, but I know pastors need appreciated. I was from a pastor's home. Kathy is a pastor's home. And they do need encouragement. But fill that out. Check the mark uh, there where it says how many Bibles you wish to distribute. And uh, $5 for each of the big hotel Bibles that I just held up. Or uh, any denomination of that. And the Lord's work will go on. Since heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Now, when I go to Kentucky, 
or back to Southeast Ohio, we have eight grandkids. We have eight grandkids. And when I go through the garage, I have to go like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You get the idea? Because they have all that, all that stuff. Yeah. But it says, heaven and earth shall pass away. And I know those things go to yard sales. They go to whatever. And they're soon, they're soon gone. But my word shall not pass away. I have another program I'd like to share quickly. It's called The Life Book. It's for Christian teens to share with the, the teens in high school that they go to, whether it be a Christian school or a public school. Uh, these are written in the book of Mark and the book of John now. And these are free for your church. Uh, if youth minister or Pastor Steve wants to order those, you go to Gideons.org and any denomination. Uh, that you need there, they can send you a, a box of those free of charge. It says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. In John 6.37. Not long ago, the Gideons were doing a distribution at a college. They were handing out these personal workers' testaments. They handed it to one gentleman, one young man, he took it, looked at it a little bit and said, started cursing, I don't need this. Took it, I might have told this last time I was here, I can't remember, but he took it and he threw it as hard as he could up over the building next to where they were standing. Well, they didn't know, but there were men working on the roof on the other side. This little testament come down and hit the worker in the head and fell down on his feet right there where he was working. Amen. He looked at it, opened it up, seen what it was, and he looked to the heavens and he said, Oh Lord, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> looked inside and thought about his messed up life and that he needed Jesus. He climbed down off the roof, looked to see where he could find the, where the Bible came from found the, the couple of Gideons there that was passing out uh, the scriptures those days, at that day. And uh, you know the rest of the story, about 20 minutes later, he gave his heart and life to the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. So it doesn't matter. Some reject it. Some accept it. But God knows where it needs to go, even if it has to go there to get there. Have you ever been stopped by the police? Have you ever been arrested, given a ticket, put in prison, say you? Talking to the crowd, Randy. Well, Dr. Ben Kanegi, he was from Kenya, Africa. He was driving back to his hotel after getting a meeting when the police officer waved him over beside the road and he said, Sir, I'd like to see two things. I want to see your driver's license and I want some tea. Dr. Ben had been forewarned that if in Kenya they ask you for some tea, that means that the police officer was really asking for a bribe. Well, Dr. Ben thought, what a value do I have here to give the man? Thinking what was happening, thinking what could happen. The only thing of any value, he reached into the glove box of his car very carefully and came out and showed the policeman the copy of God's Word, the New Testament that he had there. Shared with him in the front what to do in different situations in life. Praying all the time, wouldn't you be? Praying all the time. And in the back had the plan of salvation, right there in the back. Police officer considered. He said, say, sir. You have two more of these. There's a couple of buddies of mine working a roadblock up ahead. I'd like to give them a copy of this book. Dr. Ben was so taken back how the Lord moved in the man's life that day that after that, same area where they policed, he always looked for another policeman, a new one that day, to give the Word of God to. So God knows and God sees where we're at at all times. Leah was just getting off work one night from the hospital when she decided to pick up a couple of things. She came back out of the store, 
That time, a man came behind her and forced her into his car. She began praying, oh God, help me. He took her to a hotel. Other men were waiting there. She knew as a little girl that Gideon's put this blessed old book in the table beside the bed. She, saw, she thought, if I can just get to the Bible, that's all the hope I have. As soon as they pushed her into the room, frantically she ran over to the, the nightstand. In her hysteria, she pulled the nightstand clear over the drawer fell out on the floor, and the Holy Bible fell open to the scriptures. It's found in Psalm 59. In a weak voice, she read, Deliver me from my enemies. Deliver me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from what was in me. Save me from what was in me. She read a little louder. Deliver me from my enemies, oh my God. Deliver me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. The room was getting quiet, but she read louder. Deliver me from my enemies, oh my God. Deliver me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. All was quiet. She looked around the room and the room was empty. She called the police. In the bathroom, the police found 12 different sets of fingerprints, a roll of duct tape, a body bag, and a shovel. We thank God that there was a Gideon who was faithful to patrol that motel room to make sure the Holy Scriptures was put in every drawer. Now that's an example how his word saves even one physically, but guess what? We're just in dire straits spiritually for the soul's need that these be placed everywhere that people stay. Because there's many more testimonies I could give to where they found the Word of God, where it's supposed to be, in their, in their, in their path, and was able to speak to their hearts and their souls. In closing today, you ask yourself how you can help. How can I help? Seems like a lot of people say, well, the last thing to do is pray. No, that's the first thing you always do. That's the first thing we need to do. So pray for open doors to distribute God's word. Pray for a steady flow of funds to purchase God's word. Because you never know, this Bible here, they say when we place it in a hotel, it has the life expectancy of touching 2,200 lives for Jesus Christ before we replace it. We need professional businessmen. I'm retired. Thank God I'm retired. <laughs> We've worked very hard. Some people say, you're young to be retired. Well, and in one sense we're retired, but we took on a bigger challenge, okay, since we sold the store. Something that we enjoy greatly, and that's proclaiming God's word to a lost and dying world today and placing it wherever we can. Wives can also join then if you become a Gideon. It's called the auxiliary. You say, I don't qualify. I didn't know a business. I'm not a professional person. But you can be a friend of the Gideon. You can be a prayer friend. We'll send you via this internet we talk about all the prayer requests that needs met around the world. And if you want to be a financial and prayer friend for $10 a month, you'll get a notice of the prayer needs and pocket testaments so that you can do just what we have done. And that's take them. At the, at the fairgrounds, we're there. I think the list this year is 800. At Halloween, 1,200 up here, uptown in about 90 minutes this past year. 
I was glad to put them in those little kids' sacks and say, Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus loves you. They kind of look and what's that? Any candy? Well, we did give them candy too. <laughs> you know, we're not that bad. But uh, whatever the Lord leads you to do, I know that one thing, if you take this and let it go before you, it's a miracle of what it can do. You say, I can't do that. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Yeah. The gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't give us excuses. It gives us reasons for the hope within us to do and live for Him. And I'm just glad for the opportunity. I'm glad for your pastor, Pastor Steve, that let us come back. It wasn't scheduled tonight, but God knows why the other places are closed. And Jesus will be our guide. And it's my, my hope to, to use this. This book, it's always been, been a favorite of mine because in it I have hope in Him. It's not just a, a fun thing to do. It's not just a, you know, it, it's, it's sincerely what the world needs now. Is God's love and His 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 Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. Talk about reverencing something, and that's what we're doing. We're just ambassadors for for Christ, and I'm glad for this this church, the side of Life's Highway. We pray for our churches that you'd be a salvation station, winning the lost for Jesus Christ. And I'm glad for your faithfulness to his house tonight. God bless you, your pastor. Brother, Brother Randy, uh, when did the Gideon start? Uh, the, the one that I went, the story, the first one that I went to and went over, uh, actually they got together in 1899. So it's a vision of two guys. You say, we don't count, we're not very big. <laughs> Where two or three are gathered together in my name, the scripture says, there will I be in the midst of them. It's according to the faith that's within us and the hope that's in us that God's able to work. So just two people in 1899. Any other questions? How many languages? A uh, hundred and nine that is translated in the hard copy. And on the little card right here that I held up a while ago, 1,144 stand on your languages? languages and dialects. It's a lot of people in this world. <laughs> like I said, 4.9 billion that never has had a Bible of their own. It's hard to imagine. Anyone else? <laughs> so how, how's that work? I'm kind of old-fashioned. I probably have to ask my brother. <laughs> so how do you, how's that work? I take my phone and I scan it. Yep. And it just downloads. Yeah, if, if you have a smartphone. Yeah. If you have a smartphone, yeah, it'll just look at Not this. That kind of, I guess it does it. Okay, I guess it does do that. It'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll recognize that. Yeah, you're in my boat. I'm kind of trying to catch up with my grandkids, but they're way ahead of me. It's a different world we're living in. Yeah, it recognizes this card just like I do your face when I see you the next time. <laughs> Anyone else? So you, uh, Gideon's has churches that support them like a monthly basis? We have some churches. I know in Highland County, there's one that is faithful. There's one that's very faithful. And every time I look at the report for the, the Gideon's financial report each month, they're, they're faithful. I think every quarter they do that. They designate so much. To spreading the word of God via the getting his ministry. So uh, they do that. It's a missionary outreach. That's up to the church. Whatever God lays on your heart. And uh, he'll honor that. So if we wanted to do that as a church, send support each month, you have a place that we can send that to? Yes. Yep. I can tell you, get your address and let you know where to do that. And then, Randy, as far as you and Kathy, what do you guys do as far as yours? Support? Love offerings? We live off of love. 
<laughs> no, 100% of what's given to Gideon, whether it's me or the other 270,000 plus across the world, I thank God that we were blessed. We came to Highland County and we didn't know a soul here. We, when we came here, uh, a friend of mine that I went to college with at Ohio Northern University said that John Fuller just sold his store and there was no independent store in Hillsboro. So we came right in behind there in faith, opened the door, put ads in the paper, and it was hard for the first three years. I wondered why maybe you would do a venture like this. But by faith, we said, Lord, and I could tell you another story behind us moving here. You know, I worked in a pharmacy where I went in on Mondays and there was cards strewn all over the place. The owner there, and there was cans of, empty cans of beer on the floor. And you had to clean all that mess up. And I said, Lord, there's something better than this for me. And he, he made a way for us to come to Hillsboro. You know, when you, when you answer the call, it's not always going to be an easy thing. But he said it's required of us that we be found, as a servant, we be found faithful. Faithful. I know when I was a little boy, my daddy and mommy were from West Virginia, and they moved to Akron, Ohio, which back in the 60s was the capital of Ohio. Uh, was uh, the capital of West Virginia. They said it was Akron, Ohio, because all the West Virginians didn't want to work in the coal mines, moved up there to get a job. But, but anyway, when we moved there, there was, a, there was a preacher man. His name was Pastor Brother Myers. And he had a built-up shoe. Probably, I don't know, an inch or two thick. And I don't ever know what happened to him. I just remember when I'm little, I'm looking at people's shoes, you know, because I'm not very big. And he'd come to our door, and he'd always swing his... His one old leg around. Hi, Randy. You coming to church this week for me, son? Ask my daddy. My daddy's right there. And you know, the Holy Spirit got a hold of daddy's heart. Amen. Got a hold of mommy's heart. And ever since then, because of the efforts of one poor old crippled man, yeah. one poor old crippled preacher, he touched this boy's heart. I remember sitting back in church. I was seven years old. Nobody ever went to the altar. Nobody even sang like these little little guys did for you tonight. Not back when I was little. We were all afraid. Yeah. Sit there and shut up. Be good. <laughs> but we, we, we felt the Spirit of God. And back there one Sunday morning, I had the call of the Lord on my heart as a little boy. I said, Randy, you need to go to the altar. Amen. I said, me? Go to the altar? I'm just a little boy. I've never seen anybody go to the altar before. So I sat there. And I was afraid. And I've never done what they've done tonight up here. I wouldn't have. Because I was afraid. But after the sermon was over and the pastor said, Amen, it was church, the parsonage, and my mom and daddy's house at the Brennan when I was a little boy. I went straight out the door, and we used to race around the church. That was our fun time, seeing who's the fastest, play tag, and all that stuff, but not that Sunday. I went straight home, knelt beside my bed, yeah. and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart, yeah, to change me, to make me a new creature in him, yeah. just yes. like the preacher said. Take away the desires of this world. That's what kids need to get today. Not drugs, not the things of this world, but to fulfill their hearts with the love of Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, I'm glad for his call. Read the book of Samuel. God called him. Didn't know him, didn't know his call, but... Still, when he went to Eli, he says, when he calls you, you say, speak, Lord, for thy servant here. Yes. Speak, Lord, for thy servant here.
I don't care how old you are tonight, that's what you need to answer. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's always a present help for us. That's my testimony. That's good. 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 Amen. And every step of the way, the Lord leads us from place to place. And I remember I had a, a paper route. Had a paper route. When I was just a little boy, about seven. And uh, I went to my daddy after he got saved. And my mama and I said, I made 20 cents this week, or I made 40 cents. Now you have to remember this was back 1962. But I said, how much should I put in the offering? Dad said, well, at least 10%, I think, son. At least 10. And whatever Jesus tells you to do as an offering after that. Tithes is 10. Maybe I shouldn't be going here. Preacher, forgive me. Uh, you're fine. Uh, you're going real good. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember when the offering plate come. I remember when I made 15 cents. Uh-oh, that's a dilemma. What do I do now? It's an odd number. Well, I put in the extra half a cent, whatever it was. You know, when, whenever I go home and whenever I told Daddy, I said, we're going to start a business in Hillsboro. And we came down here. He said, son, he says, nothing you done. You just answered the call. Whatever your location is in life, you answer what he tells you to. And he said, it's because you tithed and gave to him back then that he blessed you now. Yeah. It's not just a part-time thing. Right. You're either Jesus's or you're, I don't want to even go there, the alternative. Yeah. Go all out for him. Yeah. Go all out for him. He said, because you've done that, he's blessing you today. But guess what? No money in this for this boy. Lay up treasures, what? Yeah. Where rust nor Moth, rust, dust, corrupt, were corrupt, were steeds break through, through and steal. Yeah. Don't have to worry about locking my doors. You want my scriptures? Maybe we do have this one right here, folks. This is a stolen Bible. Praise the Lord. You know how do you, how do I know that? Because I found it at a uh, at a at a sale, a state sale that was laying there. Well, these are hospital texts, and they take them home with them. Well, that's why we put them there, you know. So sometimes it may pass 2,200 people. Other times, maybe just one. But anyway, we just estimate the lifespan of this word and what, what lives it may touch. God is real. God is real. Anyone have any questions? Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Pastor Steve, do you have anything else? Appreciate it. Great God. God's, God's in control. Don't worry what people can do to you. That's in the scripture too. We can go on and on with that. Just be obedient to Him. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I come again, I will receive you unto myself that where I am there may be also. Yeah. Amen. This is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Amen. Amen. Hold on to this world. It'll drag you down. Oh, yes. It will drag you down. We tell our young people, put that techno stuff away. It's time to eat with Pappy and Mammy. She's a very good stickler on that stuff. <laughs> so we need more communication. We've got all these devices, but we're not getting it done. Yeah. We're not getting it done. Yeah. I told my told my second daughter the other day, I said, You and Michael, I said, make sure that you have family devotions. Don't let them slide. 
I know you're a busy man. I know, Jen, you work part time too, but you got to have time for the kids. Yeah. Train up a child in the way they should go. Yes. Train them up. Get them the word. Praise the Lord. I could go on. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're all right. The Lord's on our side.